Yes, it's another adventure with Hidden Inca Tours. Today, exploring Rome and the Vatican. This, of course, is the famous Colosseum, which was the largest Colosseum ever built during Roman times. It supposedly only took eight years to construct from 72 to 80 AD. And you can see quite clearly all of the repair work that was uh, that has been done to it over the centuries. Uh, the core parts is relatively intact, but this poor building, as well as the ancient city of Rome, was very badly trashed. Rome supposedly was founded in the 8th century BC by Romulus and Remus, from which, of course, Rome gets its name. Romulus, uh, according to the legends, killed his brother Remus, and the two of them were fostered as small children by a female wolf. So Rome does have its great history. It was one of the epicenters of the ancient world. I was looking for possible evidence of lost ancient high technology or megalithic works. There didn't appear to be anything within Rome itself, but Italy does have a lot of amazing megalithic works that we will explore in future tours, probably in 2020 with Patricia Awian. So here's another part of what's left of ancient Rome. Um, Again, the poor empire of Rome badly trashed in the 4th century AD by supposedly Germanic peoples invading. And then in the 800s, Arabs moved in and trashed it even more and supposedly also stole a lot of the wealth from the Vatican. Some of it was recovered, though, because the ships that these people escaped in crashed on the coast, and their bodies were strewn all over the beaches, and supposedly they were wearing a lot of the great jewelry of the Vatican. So Rome is uh, spread out much more than I thought it would be. It's actually a very big city in terms of sheer square footage. Um, and there are 15 different obelisks from Egypt located in different parts of the city. Uh, classic architecture like this. Uh, it's a very clean city, too, uh, which is quite wonderful. The, the traffic's pretty bad, but not awful. Italy actually has an excellent transportation system with buses and taxis and subways, etc. This is our first glimpse of the Tiber River. And uh, that circular building was the fortress of, sorry, the fortress of Hadrian. This is our first glimpse of the Tiber River. And now we're crossing over the Tiber itself, past all of these people selling souvenirs and things, and we're going to explore Vatican City. So as you would suspect, there are a lot of phenomenal marble statues and other beautiful aspects of architecture in Rome, one of the classy cities of the world. And again, what we're doing now is we're starting to approach Hadrian's Fortress or Hadrian's Castle. Hadrian is per, uh, perhaps most famous for having used elephants in his armies and expansion. There you see, whoop, just off to the left there, that was uh, St. Peter's Basilica. So the castle of Hadrian shows a lot of wear and tear as well as repair. I believe presently now it's a... Um, a church of some kind, of which there are, of course, many in Rome. And now a view once again of the Tiber River. Relatively clean, considering the size of the city. And there's St. Peter's Basilica. 
So we're now approaching St. Peter's along this long colonnade, perfectly aligned north, south, east, and west. And this gives you a view in 360 degrees of the different buildings that are around the Vatican. Police presence, of course. And now we're actually entering through part of the ancient um, wall of Imperial Rome. And then taking a turn to the right and walking towards Vatican City. So these beautiful limestone columns, I'm not sure what time period they're from. Uh, Vatican City dates from the 3rd or 4th century AD because originally it was the burial place of St. Peter and of course expanded much more beyond that. Uh, it is the smallest country in the world. The Pope, of course, is in charge of the Catholic uh, Christian slash religion, but he's also the king of Vatican City. So in that way, he covers both of the great territories of religion and politics. He is the religious leader and the political leader of Vatican City. There you see one of the 15 obelisks taken from ancient Egypt. This one supposedly was taken by Caligula, and it's curiously in the epicenter of that square. Was this done just for symbolic reasons, or was it done for energetic reasons? All these questions kept popping up in my mind as we traveled. This is the Great Wall that separates Vatican City from Rome itself, and in fact from Italy. And you can see that it's actually very tall, and would be almost impossible to climb. And now the entrance to the Vatican Museum itself. I thought for sure this is as far as I could get filming in 4K video, but I was pleasantly surprised. Nobody bothered us whatsoever. So inside, the beginning of the museum, many different statues from ancient Egypt, such as these Sekhmet lioness figures, probably also taken by Caligula. And unfortunately, I had to take off my gimbal stabilizer because I thought I would have to secretly film in the Vatican. There is a large pine cone, which some people believe uh, represents the pineal gland. And, of course, fountains and very beautifully executed lions. There again is the pineal gland protected by two peacocks. And now inside the museum itself, this huge hallway with hundreds, if not thousands, of marble figures. This is only a small section of the museum. And then this quite incredible, what appears to be a turned marble vessel of some kind, and even more astonishing, what appears to be a bathtub, but the polish on this um, granite, which could very well have come from Aswan, is amazing. Uh, you see the repair work that's been done here, but it is machine-like smooth. The surfaces are absolutely incredible. So whether this dates from Roman times or Egyptian times, or in fact is an example of lost ancient high technology, is an interesting question. This rhyolite column was taken from ancient Egypt. It is pre-dynastic. 
as is this one, because the dynastic Egyptians were not able to make columns in one piece like this. And then another one of these amazing bathtub things. Uh, again, machine-like smoothness. The polish, mirror-like. Um, it's granite once again. And um, that's something I didn't expect to see in this museum. And still we were able to film, quite amazingly. And finally, this is the headgear of the ancient popes of the Vatican. Very elongated head looking for some, so far, unknown reason. So these are upcoming events at hiddenincatours.com. Contact in the desert at uh, Indian Wells in California in June. A UFO conference in England in September. Our Great India Exploration of Lost Ancient High Technology and Megaliths in January 2019. And Mexico Ancient Technology Tour in February 2019. And finally, details for our Egypt April 2019 tour will be coming very soon.